And I know this is if I be NPR and labor right. If you're a Jamaican, and you we are the fame. Yeah. And I say it to every person who has called himself a JLP supporter in the past. Bless up, bless up my people. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video, my people. And in this one, Mark Golden, who is the president of the People's National Party and the member of parliament for South St. Andrew, come out last night, my people, in the South St. Andrew area at a conference. And my people, he spoke up. He sent a very strong message to all the Jamaica Labour Party supporters and ask them if they are happy with what is going on through the current government. He outlined some of the achievements of the People's National Party and he also states some of what they will do if and when the People's National Party forms the next government. I'm a people with the elections less than a year to call we're seeing where the People's National Party basically up in their tempo going around and doing their campaigns and they're getting a whole lot of support from the people. So I want to take in this speech at the conference and they even took jobs at Montague for saying that the third term that they're hoping for is for the people. Then what was the other two term for? And some people who not be the judge of this? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Yes, our debt has come down and the IMF rate us for that. But that has nothing to do with the daily experience of life that the ordinary Jamaican person feels and where they see their life going. Why do so many of them have to run and leave the country or try to do so? Because what is happening here is not right. So we see the source of solutions, the source of hope, the source of potential achievement being setting the system right for our people. And I know this is if a PMP or a labor right, if you're a Jamaican, and you we are the yeah. And I say to every person who has called himself a JLP supporter in the past, may have put their ex beside the bell in the past. Think about the government we have now. You deserve better than that. Yeah. Teach them a lesson yeah. and make them wheel and come again. Yeah. Who them up? This is what I'm talking about. Their next term will be for the people. The people don't say what they really are dealing with already and what they charge for already. Yeah. And the people want to get them out. We want to focus on the real issues. We want to make sure the Jamaican feels that they can make their life here and their people and their grand people with better love. We want to ensure that any child that wants to attend school, if she's the daughter of a Rasta and she has lots, the school can't tell her she can't come to school. Anything can go so in the 21st century. And when the matter goes to court, the Andrew who won this government fight the little picnic and her parents as hard as they could, tooth and nail, at the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal to try and stop her from going to school. And if the Court of Appeal, under the former president of the Court of Appeal, who does her child, who handed down judgment in her favor. But the system must never allow that to happen again. Yes. We have a situation in our country where our people feel excluded from the beauty of the land. The General Secretary and others tonight have pointed out the key issues really facing the Jamaican people. I come to this position not because I want to talk. I see this position as a means to achieving better life and better men for the people of Jamaica, especially those who need it most. I am tired. I am sitting 
I want you to tell me when you or your relatives have to put out a public and you have to be in a wheelchair for days when you should be admitted to get health care and when you need certain tests, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars you have to find to do it. And people suffer and die in the lack of dignity, the indignity of the way the public health system treats with them. I cry for the youth of Jamaica when I see the results from our education system. And I know what a brilliant people we are and how talented we are. But I know the system is failing them and it needs to be re-engineered and it needs investment starting with early childhood development from the womb coming up through primary school into secondary school. The mission of the next People's National Party government is to turn Jamaica around through investing in our people, our human capital. We will always be a low growth, low wage, low tech economy unless we invest in our people and uplift our people so our people can deliver what is needed to have an economy that creates wealth for all. The best beaches in the country are not available to the Jamaican people. Now we love the tourism industry. We see the importance of it. I have good friends in our sales sector, but we need to ensure that it works for the Jamaican people. That is what it is there for. And the enclave system is not sufficient. We need tourism that is integrated into the communities where this little man, the everyday Jamaican person, can make up good money out of delivering services and goods and indeed and have access to the beaches of this country so that they can chill out and feel that all of the comments and all the vibes and relieve some stress. So these are issues that we have to take up and tackle. The ganja industry. I feel passionate about the ganja industry. Why? Because I was the one who really pushed through the reforms that they passed in 2015 so nobody can go to jail for a slip or a chalice or a draw a wheel. Yeah, man. And if you have a criminal record for some past offense of personal use, you have the right to have that automatically removed from your record. A wheel of that, a People's National Party do that. But part of that reform was to create a new industry in Jamaica in the medicinal and therapeutic ganja, which is in demand around the world. But the man then inheriting in 2016 would just have kept going, we just started, and we never get to set it right. The truth on it. And the man inheriting and mash up the thing. All now this the, the regulatory body, the cannabis licensing authority, things not run right in there. The staff and the management in affliction. And the people who have invested in the industry are very disappointed because the way that the thing has rolled out, it makes it almost impossible for them to survive in a business. That was never the intention. The intention was that industry should be fully accessible to the small farmer, whether you be in Orange Hill or whether you be in St. Elizabeth or St. Anna, right as up in South St. Andrew, you could have make a good money by growing some good quality ganja for medicinal and therapeutic purposes. That was where we were going. We have to set the thing, we have to fix that so that the industry can thrive. And you hear what the man said, he said, our spokesperson for agriculture, fisheries and rural development. Why do you think we put a man like him in a position like that? The man full of ideas, the man full of energy, the man full of commitment. And I know he will take agriculture, fisheries and rural development to a different level. A level that normal man may always intended it to have in the economy of this country. And that has never been achieved thus far. We intend to deal with that because our economy coming like a stool that don't have enough legs to stand on. We're too vulnerable, and some of them kind of wobbly because if something happened a foreign and the world turned a certain way, everything locked down. So we need to food security. We need to deal with that thing.